Welcome to the introductory video on the MATLAB Embedded Coder Target from STW. In this initial video, we aim to introduce the topic and demonstrate the first steps using the example of the ESX4 CLAG, showcasing how to set up the embedded coder target. Following that, we will flash the applications generated with MATLAB Simulink onto the controller using OpenSight. Additionally, this video provides a brief overview of the key features of the STW embedded coder target for MATLAB. The ESX4 CLAG controller serves as an example of using embedded coder targets across all STW fourth generation controllers. Embedded coder targets, as depicted in this video, can be utilized for all other fourth generation STW controllers as well. What software is required? As listed, we need the following software on our PC. Windows 10 64-bit or newer, MATLAB R2022B 64-bit, Tricore Toolchain from STW, and the STW Embedded Coder Target for the corresponding controller, in our case, for the ESX4 CLAG. For the proper operation of the Embedded Coder Target, the following MathWorks products are necessary. MATLAB, Simulink, MATLAB Coder, Simulink Coder, Embedded Coder, and Simulink Test. Additionally, we recommend the following MathWorks products. State Flow and Vehicle Network Toolbox. The dependencies of each product can be found on the MathWorks company website, where the products and their dependencies are displayed. For MATLAB products, please contact your local MathWorks sales representative for your country or company. To obtain the STW tools mentioned above, feel free to reach out to your dedicated STW representative. They are readily available to provide support and guidance as needed. Upon receiving and successfully installing the required MathWorks products, we assume that MATLAB is running and all other products are installed. The STW Tricore toolchain should also be installed. Furthermore, we have the MATLAB embedded coder target for the corresponding STW controller available to us. We unpack the received zip file of the embedded coder target into a folder of our choice. In our example, C temp demo video. In the zip file of the embedded coder target, you will find the following data. All required MATLAB files in a subfolder, a short readme, and the setup script for your target. This script is needed to create a new project once. When we run the setup script in MATLAB for your target, we will be asked for the installation location of the embedded coder target. In our example, we select the MATLAB files folder of the MATLAB installation, which in our example is located under C temp demo video ESX4 CL AG -E -C -T. The path specification is only necessary once. The path is saved for further use in the MATLAB settings. After successful installation of the embedded coder target, we will see a brief confirmation that MATLAB has been configured to work with the controller-specific embedded coder target. Next, we navigate to a folder of our choice, in our example to see temp demo video, where we create a new project folder named My New Project. This can be done via the menu with the mouse or directly using the command line and the mkdir command as shown here. In this folder, we now create a new project. Please note that this project folder must be empty as everything in this folder will be overwritten or deleted. To create a new project, it is recommended to type ESX underscore and activate auto-completion with the tab key. You will be offered the project creator for the appropriate target. Confirm this with return. Folders for the application core, boot core and safety core, along with their respective sub-projects, have been created on the left side in the current folder window. Moreover, the FPGA folder and the corresponding open side project have been added. The project creator automatically generates the models and transfers essential files, including C files and libraries, from the installation folder to their designated project directories. Once this process is complete, we are ready to build our project. The multi-core architecture of the controller requires three hex files, 
for the three cores of the CPU from the three projects. The projects have already been created for us by the project creator. We will now delve into the respective project and open the MATLAB project. First, we use the application core. Now we can take the fast route and press the build or rebuild button in the shortcuts. We can also do this from the model itself. Via apps, embedded coder and start the build process here. The sources will be generated and similar to the MATLAB installation at the very beginning, we will be asked once for the location of OpenSite. Here we specify the absolute path to the OpenSide X. Lastly, we will be asked for the appropriate folder of the Tricore toolchain and we provide this path. Once we have specified the folder, the compilation process starts. After a successful compilation process, OpenSight is opened and we could already flash the generated hex file onto the controller. However, it is necessary to generate a hex file for each core of the controller. For this reason, we close OpenSight and the Simulink model and switch to the project folder Boot Core and open the project contained therein. Here we click the build button in the project shortcuts without first opening the model. The build function in the project shortcuts is identical to that in the model, but the model remains in the background and does not need to be opened for the creation of the hex files. Open side will be reopened after the hex file has been successfully created. We close open side to then create the files for the safety core. This time in MATLAB, the compiler's log data will be displayed in the command window and not in the diagnostic viewer of the model. We return to our project and select the safety core folder for which we want to create a hex file. After opening the project file, we click the build button in the project shortcuts again. Like the other two projects, application core and boot core, open site will be opened again this time. We once again see the log outputs of the compiler in the command window. We are now able to flash our first application created with MATLAB onto the controller. To do this, we open the OpenSide template project, which is located in C, Temp, Demo Video, My New Project, OpenSide, and then click on System Commissioning. The ESX4CLAG allows us to flash via CAN or Ethernet. For higher speed, we select flashing via Ethernet by clicking on view number 4, ETH. For further details on flashing a controller with OpenSide, please refer to the videos for OpenSide. After clicking update in the view, we can see that the previously generated hex files are already selected in the update packages for the respective cores. By clicking on update system, we can now proceed to flash the hex files generated with MATLAB onto the controller. This action puts the controller into the update mode. The green check marks on the data blocks indicate which hex files have already been successfully written to the controller. After a successful flashing process, signaled by the green check mark in the progress indicator, we exit the update mode. The controller undergoes a reset and subsequently loads the newly flashed application. We can determine whether the application has been transferred and is running error-free by consulting the dashboard. Here we observe two counters, one for the application core and one for the safety core. Upon going online with the dashboard, we observe synchronous counting of the counters at one second intervals. As we can ascertain, this is the case for us. The first application created with MATLAB is running on our controller. Now that we have successfully verified the transfer and error-free operation of the application using the dashboard in OpenSide, 
Let's proceed with our exploration of additional functionalities offered by the embedded coder target from STW. Before we do that, let's return to MATLAB. To expand our project with additional BIOS functionalities, the embedded coder target from STW provides comprehensive support for all CBIOS functions in the form of Simulink blocks. To access this, we open the Simulink library browser. Within this browser, we find a block library specifically tailored for our chosen target. This library is divided into three main sections, Application Core, Boot Core and Safety Core. Each section contains various available functions grouped according to their use cases such as input functions, output functions and more. If we ever need clarification on the function of a specific block, such as X in a current diag, we can simply right-click on the block to access the integrated help. This help is directly integrated into MATLAB and provides support similar to the STW user manuals found in the CTSP. In case we need to integrate legacy code or existing C libraries into our MATLAB application, a flexible interface is available to us. When examining the generated source code, the usual starting point is typically main.c. This file includes both static and dynamic components, as indicated by the corresponding comments. The functions marked as dynamic are regenerated by the embedded coder based on the Simulink model. The calls to the static functions are also generated. The contents of these static functions, each marked with hl, are found in a separate file hluser.c or hluser.h. In hluser.c, general settings are established. Empty function bodies like that of hl init sys post can be manually filled with code, such as for invoking a library or a communication stack. This mechanism is implemented throughout the entirety of main.c with various entry points, allowing us to extend the application at different points. The implementation always takes place in hluser.c. We summarize. In this video, we have learned about the use of the STW embedded coder target using the example of the ESX4 CLAG with MATLAB. We demonstrated the initialization of the STW embedded coder target, the possibilities of building applications for the controller, flashing applications with OpenSight, and the verification of application transmission with the help of the OpenSight dashboard on the controller. Additionally, we have provided a brief overview of the main functions of the STW embedded coder target, explored existing C code, and shown practical ways in which applications can be extended with existing C code. In further videos of this series, we will show how the application can be extended and go into more detail on the interplay between MATLAB and OpenSight. We wish you much pleasure and success in using the MATLAB embedded coder target from STW. Thank you.